Hi everyone and welcome back to this little tiny corner of YouTube where we are going to be talking about how to choose a PhD program. Now this is kind of multifaceted and a question that applies to a lot of different situations. So we're going to cover it more from the you've got your PhD offers, congratulations. <laughs> you've got them from a few schools because you're amazing and obviously you've got them from a few schools so now you've got to choose between all of these incredible programs that will want you so it's how to navigate that choice process so that you end up choosing a PhD program that suits you both professionally and personally uh, uh, you know like, but this is also a relevant video for those people who are thinking of doing a PhD and they're actually choosing PhD programs to apply to so I would definitely say like some of these tips are definitely relevant for like both sides of it so let's dive in Okay, so the first thing that I started with when I was sort of trying to toy up which PhD program I wanted to choose out of the options was looking at the actual physical program, like the program details, like the nitty gritty of what you're actually going to be doing in those five, six years. So whether that is which courses you're expected to be taking, which courses you can take, what the compulsory modules are, like what you're actually going to have to be doing. And what I did with this was I made a detailed list of aspects that I liked and aspects that I didn't like. Not necessarily didn't like, because obviously we've applied to good programs, but aspects that I thought might be like, mm, not so keen on this one, but I really, really like this one so it's kind of a okay it's kind of a massive glorified pros and cons list and i know that sounds like really obvious but honestly when it's all jumbled up in your brain and you're like oh, this and that, what about this? if you get it all down on paper and just like write that list it's going to help you clarify your thoughts so much more and when you actually see it written down you might be thinking actually like i weigh that up more than i do that like this means more to me than that so i'm going to give more emphasis on this program than that program just having it all written down really really helps you can get this information obviously from the program's website from the the recruitment event they might have given you like more information like and then make those links so like join them back to which ones align with your why I say this every video but why are you doing a PhD why do you want to do a PhD so you really want to make sure that these pros are all linked back to your end goal why but just which ones align more with your why and which ones don't align more with your why it helps you sort of navigate that like pros and cons list so then once I had a nice little pros and cons list of the program itself, I then took a bit of a deeper dive into the actual faculty that are going to be teaching there. Like who's in charge of what, which labs are you going to be able to rotate in? Do you get to rotate in labs? How many rotations do you have to pick? So you'd want to identify that there's at least like that many faculty that you would be interested in working with because it could be an incredible school, but they're not doing the research that you're interested in or there's no one working on antibiotic resistance. Like you want to work on antibiotic resistance. So it's just identifying where whether it's actually going to be able to help fulfill your why from a faculty point of view and from the actual labs and stuff that you're going to be doing. So what I did is I started off with the program's faculty website and you can like have a look and you can see who's on the faculty list and who is going to be like part of those labs that you're going to be able to rotate in. Then what I did is I briefly read their little bios and descriptions because they sort of give you like a one liner on what work they're interested in. And I sort of shortlisted probably about 10 to 12 of those that I found interesting and then checked out their lab websites, just really got a bit more of a deeper dive to figure out what their work they're doing and whether I felt like my research would not only be a good fit but whether I'm going to be able to learn what I want to learn from this PhD again linking back to that why that we talked about earlier then we can move on to step three of figuring this out and this was a little bit of a like a vibe check so like what is the vibe of this school and I know it's really hard to figure out the vibe from not really having gone there but you can really if you've like gone to you can really you can really get an idea because you've gone through this whole interview process you've gone through this whole application process how easy did they make it how supportive were they were you able to ask questions and get an answer when you needed to how was the recruitment event if they had interviews and you had to go to the school how was that how did you get on with other graduate students asking them about their experiences what do other people say about this school is it mainly positive feedback or is it negative feedback so having those conversations with graduate students I would say is invaluable if you have LinkedIn try and connect with fellow graduate students and just ask them like their experiences they don't even necessarily have to be from that program ideally they would be from that program or like someone who's worked with that PI if you're applying to so for in the UK like I was applying to work with a specific PI so I'd like ask people from that PI like oh how's it going getting their experiences because faculty like it's great and they're always going to be like super positive and super amazing and you're going to have inspirational chats with them but you never really know how it's going to go until you talk to the graduate students so like see do they look happy do they look miserable this is all the kind of stuff is it a very competitive atmosphere or is it an encouraging atmosphere these are the things that I really think you have to try and suss out I know it's really difficult but it is honestly like I think the most important thing when you're 
trying to decide a program because ultimately it's got to fit you personally. You're going to be there. And if it's not nurturing you in the way that you need to be nurtured for this PhD program, then it's probably not the program for you. <sighs> okay, so now I want to talk about the practicalities of the, the, pr the practical aspects of like each PhD program because each PhD program is going to have vastly different practical aspects. So people don't think that they're important, but I'm here to tell you that they are important. These practical aspects are going to be the difference between you having a great time in your PhD and not having such a great time in your PhD. So you want to make sure that everything is kind of aligning and the stars are aligning. So you really want to take into account these practical aspects. I said practical aspects a million times and I'm going to actually tell you what they are. So number one, area and location. I know that you shouldn't ideally choose a PhD because of the area and location, but let's not lie. If you've got two tied, the one that's in the area that you prefer is probably going to be better. Do you like a city vibe? Do you like a countryside vibe? Do you like somewhere in the middle? Do you like going on hikes and lots of nature? Or do you like being in walking distance from the shops? Like that kind of stuff. Because this also ties into like, you're going to have to live in this city and like live here like while you're doing your PhD so you kind of want to be happy in it. Uh, the other practical aspect that I really want to hammer home is finances so like what is the funding situation like what is the stipend that they're giving you and how does that relate to the cost of living in that city because you need to be able to live. I know that like different PhD programs give you different stipends and some are more than others so like definitely taking that into account with the cost of living so definitely taking that into account is important. So now the final step of choosing your PhD program, you have collated these massive lists. You're doing such a great job. You've got all of these lists. You've got, you've narrowed it down. Maybe you've excluded a couple of schools along the way because the labs actually, like when you look that much into it, like they're not exactly doing the work that you precisely wanted to do. Maybe your interests have changed, blah, 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 blah. You've got this incredible list. The final thing that you really need to take into account is, is your gut your gut instinct like if one is telling you that this is the school for you like listen to it i'm not to say that just go off your gut it is important to be logical because as i said before like if you're going for your gut and it's like actually not practical for you or, or whatever and you still want to be able to get the same the stuff out of your phd that you really want to learn but listening to your gut is i'm not saying make a gut decision and i haven't just gone through this whole video to tell you to just listen to your heart. I am saying that it like definitely weighs into it. If you like have a gut feeling about something, maybe give that one more emphasis and then evaluate these logical things. Um, so yeah, that is how I ultimately ended up making my decision. Okay, so we've gone through all of these fun little things and we've got our massive pros and cons list and it's all looking good. And, um, but ultimately I found that like just writing it all down, really getting clear on what I wanted out of my PhD education and seeing which one best matched that, then adding in my gut feeling really helped me make the right decision for me. Doing that, if anyone has any other cool ways, please share them below because I want to know. Um, but yeah, we've come to the end of another video here. So hopefully, congratulations on getting PhD offers, everyone out there. And if those, if there are other people watching who want to apply for a PhD in the future and aren't sure which schools to choose to apply for, then I hope that this framework also kind of helps you to like narrow down which ones out of the millions of schools out there that you could submit an application to. And you'll be watching this video again, this time next year, once you get in to those schools. So that is all very exciting. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have and you want to see more PhD tips and advice, then please do drop a comment below, like this video, and please subscribe to my channel. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.